what is up people and welcome to another video and in this video we'll be taking a look at a utility called kubectl which is basically a utility to configure and operate kubernetes so in our previous video we take we've taken a look at how to um, install kubernetes on docker for windows we've configured our cluster and now i want to run through the command line utility so you can become more efficient at operating kubernetes so without further ado Let's go. So the first thing we're going to want to do is configure kubectl. Now, kubectl can point to multiple clusters. So in the previous video, we've um, gone through the process of installing Kubernetes locally using Docker for Windows. So what that software does is it actually configures a kube config file on our behalf um, that will point to the Docker for Windows Kubernetes cluster. So we can go and configure this config file to point to any cluster. So we can point to development, production, staging, or whatever cluster you have. So in this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to configure kubectl and then some of the commands that we wanna use and how to use kubectl in general. So the first command that you're interested in is the kubectl config command. When you run this, this will give you some more information and documentation about kube um, config and I will actually explain some of this um, quickly at a very high level. Now when you run any kubectl command it looks at a kube config file. Now the default path is in your home directory um, under a .cube folder. So I have this um, folder already created for me under my users directory .cube and there's a config file in here. When you expand this config file, you can see that it has a multiple um, settings. It has a list of clusters, a list of users, and then a list of contexts. Now, a, um, a cluster is just an endpoint to the, where the Kubernetes cluster is located. And then a user has the credential to authenticate to that cluster. And then what a context is, is a context is um, basically a configuration that points you to the cluster so we're interested in the context so we're going to have like a local docker for desktop context that is the kubernetes cluster that runs locally and then we can have like a production context or a dev or a staging context now that's the simplest way is to have a config file in your users folder you can also if you have a multiple configs you can pass them in by saying kubectl config and then just passing the kube config flag to some other the config path um, that's also one way of doing it another way of doing it is setting an environment variable called cube config and you can actually have like multiple paths separated by colon and when kubectl runs it'll look at that config first so it will um, basically allow you to merge configs um, different configuration files together so when working with Kubernetes configs, the main thing we're interested in is the context because that tells us which cluster we're pointing at. So you want to run this command kubectl config current context and that'll tell you the cluster you're pointing at. And what you can also do is a basically the set the get and set commands. So the this one here if you copy that and run that, that'll get to the current context. It'll give you all the context that you have in your config, and it'll have a little star next to the one that um, is currently set. And then you can also change the, the context by using this command to say use context, and then you can just type in the name of a different context here. And that allows you to switch between different Kubernetes clusters. The next important command is the get command. This allows you to retrieve Kubernetes resources. Now, in future videos, I'm actually going to deep dive into every type of Kubernetes object and basically explain what it means and how to create them. And But in this video, I want to just show you guys how to run the get command. So you can say kubectl get pods and that'll list pods. Very simple. You can do kubectl get deployments. That'll list any deployments. You can say kubectl get services. Um, that'll list out the services. We have one service running there. You can do config maps. Um, you can do secrets. There's a default secret in that cluster and ingress. So that's how you just retrieve resources. 
The next type of Kubernetes object that's quite important to um, work with is namespaces. Now, normally resources are scoped to a namespace and a namespace is like a project group or like a resource group or like a just a group of objects. <clears throat> now, in Kubernetes, namespaces can be used to isolate resources so you can have a namespace per team a namespace per business unit namespace per department or however you wanted to set it up it allows you to separate resources from one another now when we do that get command we can also pass in a namespace to get the pods that are associated with that namespace or any resource associated with it so in order to create or to get namespaces we use the get command so we say get namespaces we can see we have a bunch of namespaces here and we can create our own one um, called test so we say kubectl create namespace test and that um, namespace is created i can go and run the get one again and see <clears throat> it's been created five seconds ago now it's important to notice that there is a default namespace in the cluster and when you run these get commands or any command in that matter that applies to a namespace it'll always use the default namespace so if you say get pods um, Kubernetes will look at the default namespace and see there are no pods in there. If we want to get the pods for a specific namespace, we have to pass it in using the dash n flag and we can just pass in a name of our namespace and that'll get the pods associated with that namespace. The next command I want to show you guys is called the describe command. This one is very important. Um, other than the get command, because the get command will list you some pods, it'll show you a status. So if you say, kubectl get pods you'll see a list of pods with the statuses if you say get nodes you'll get the machines with their statuses etc but sometimes you need a, need a little bit more than that like you need the events and some sort of state that, that that object is in and maybe some past historical events so for that we use the kubectl describe command now because we don't have anything in this kubernetes cluster yet what i want to do is show you guys so if you say kubectl get ns which is namespaces that's the short abbreviated term um, it'll list out the namespaces so i'm going to use the cube system namespace and i'm just going to list out all the pods so i'm going to say kubectl get pods for the namespace cube system and that'll list out all the pods in that namespace and i'm just going to uh, grab a random pod here and i'm going to say kubectl <coughs> describe pod and then the name of the pod and then also again the name of the namespace remember otherwise it'll go look in the default so i do that and now you can see um, a lot more information and this is quite useful because this tells you the namespace it's in um, some priority class names the node it's running on the time it was started the labels that it has it's currently running there's its ip address um what else is important here the image that's running so if you want to see what version your container is your image container image um, if you want to see what ports are exposed um, arguments here's the current state so sometimes you can see when a container throws an error it'll have a state here saying like exit code that's very important or if it's running out of memory it'll have a oom um killed or um, any kind of exceptions it's throwing if it's crashing there'll be a crash looback um, <clears throat> if it has any limits and request values for resources, probes, mounts, um, this is important, some of the conditions. And then there are also events. Now, normally when there's some sort of crash status happening or some problem, you will see events here that will tell you what's wrong with that um, resource. So this is a very good um, command, describe. And I normally use it for like to describe deployments, to describe pods and to describe nodes. So if the underlying infrastructure is problematic, like a virtual machine, I say kubectl describe node and the name of the node. Or if there's a um, container that's um, hanging up, I just say kubectl describe pod and then the name of the pod. 
And the final command that we're going to be um, running through in this video is the version. So this is important when you're working with clusters that have multiple versions. You type kubectl version and that'll tell you the version of kubectl that you have installed as well as the version of Kubernetes that you're pointing to. So the server version. So as you can see, kubectl is quite an advanced tool and it gets a lot more advanced as we go through the process. But I hope this video would help you understand the basics. So in this video, we cover, you know, how to configure kubectl to point to different clusters, the uh, concept around contexts to point to different clusters, and also the ability to navigate resources. So to navigate the cluster, um, to navigate namespaces, get all the different types of resource objects. Now, in the next video, we're going to be take a, taking a look at deployments. So how do we deploy stuff to Kubernetes? And as we go along in future videos, we'll be going into more advanced concepts. But hopefully this video helps you get a hang of kubectl and start using it so you can navigate your cluster and just get become an expert in the command line. Hope you guys enjoy this video. Like and subscribe. Leave a comment below if there's stuff that you'd like me to cover. And until next time, peace.